Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create really secure, really easy to use restore points in Linux. If you're new to Linux, you're going to be worried about changing stuff in the system and screwing something up. This is normal, everyone understands. Now, there's a really great feature in Linux called Time Shift. Um, I use this feature quite a lot. And what this feature will do is it will basically create restore points that are really simple to use. Now, what this means is that you can get a little bit dirty in your system, you can play around with stuff and you can really securely go back to that point without worrying about screwing everything up or having to reinstall all the operating system and all your programs again. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you time shift, how it works really simply and my, um, preferences for what you should use in it for setting this up. So we're going to go over to my desktop now and I'm going to type in time shift here. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to ask me for the password. Now once you load this up for the very first time what will happen is that you are going to be presented with the wizard. If I click the wizard now it's going to say how do you want to set this up. Now our sync will be perfectly fine unless you're using a specific type of system. You can click on the help and get the drop down. You can click next. Uh, where do you want to store the snapshots and so on? You can also click next and then say where do you want? How many do you want? So because I've already set this up, this is what mine shows. Two monthly backups, one weekly backup and five daily. You can also set up hourly and boot as well. Then you can click on next again and this is going to be default it's going to exclude all the files in the root directory and in the home directory for the user this is fairly important you probably don't want to change this because you really should have something else in place for backing up your um backing up your own files now i'm going to click x on there because i don't want to actually change anything anyway but once you've done this you're going to have it set up and time shift will run automatically in the background and you can specify which times you want it to run do you want it to run at midnight at eight o'clock in the morning it doesn't really matter you tell it which times and it will probably create a original uh, manual point for you which is what this one is here when i installed this specific system that you're looking at right now it was done on the 14th of november 2021 as you can see here, it's got this different version of Manjaro here. It's got the original, which basically stands for other manual, whatever. And then you put the comments in here. Uh, I've called this one initial. It should probably give it this name by itself. And then after that, you can see there's a monthly backup, M. There's another monthly backup here. There's a daily backup, and then there's a weekly backup. And then you can see the list of all the backups. If you ever want to create a manual backup, you can hit create. It will do it. It will take a few seconds. I will hit it for you now. It's going to basically scan all the files on the system, excluding your root directory and your home directory. It's going to make a backup like this. It literally takes, for me, seconds. There you go, and it's done. Now I've created a manual backup. And click on here, and I can basically type in a comment. I can say this one is a manual backup for the video. And there you go. Now I know that I've got this manual backup. So if I change something in the next 10 minutes, I can go back to this and my computer will be like it was 10 minutes ago. And to do that, I would click on a backup. Let's say if we click on this backup here and I can hit restore. Now, when you hit restore, it's going to ask you, where do you want to put everything? Now, if you don't change anything, if you don't change anything about that restore point, the restore point itself knows where it was installed. It knows what it's looking for, specific devices and names. If you don't change anything, it will keep it as the default. So you don't need to change anything if you're restoring to uh, the computer that you're already on. Now, of course, you can change stuff. We can change this uh, root path if we want to. We can say if we want to move the boot device. But if you keep it all the same, you can just click on next. And what it's going to do now is it's going to compare that restore point to my computer right now. As you can see, it doesn't take very long. It's pretty quick. And this is a list of all the files it's going to restore and the files it's going to delete. If I click on next, it's going to tell me the last page. These are the things that are going to be modified, similar to when you reformat a hard drive and so on. Now, I'm not going to click next because I don't want to restore to that point now. I'm going to hit on cancel. After that point, it's going to restore. 
Now this feature also works if you have a USB stick with Manjaro on, which you should do because you've installed it. Then what you can do is you can take your live Linux USB, put it in your computer, boot to the USB stick, and then still see all the restore points because the restore points are on the local hard drive. And then you can restore to that point specifically. A few days ago, I had a kernel panic on my system. Don't worry if you don't know what that is, but it basically stops your entire system from booting up. So I put in my Manjaro USB stick, booted to Manjaro live image, loaded up time shift in the USB version, could see this list here. I clicked on one of the versions, clicked restore, and the process from putting in the USB stick to using my system again was about 10 minutes. It's really that quick. You can delete files from here. You can browse. If you hit browse, it'll basically just take you to that snapshot. So that's, that's all that does. So you can have a look at the files inside if you want. The settings lets you go in and change these settings. So if you want to exclude stuff or include stuff or anything like that, the schedule that you want to do, you can change the settings in here. My recommendations for time shift are as follows. I recommend enabling a monthly backup. I recommend enabling a weekly backup and I recommend enabling a daily backup. If I go to settings, you can see my schedule here. I've got two monthly backups. I would like to have a couple. That way I can definitely go back if I wasn't sure exactly when I've done something. I've got one weekly backup because I've got five daily backups. I feel like, okay, I can go back one week, I can go back a few days. And this way, if I'm not sure that I did something yesterday or the day before, I can go back one day, two day, three days. I can go back a week or I can go back a month. This allows me to have a really good system to be able to be sure I'm backing up to something. But if you only keep a monthly backup and you have done a lot of changes that you don't want to do again, then you've got a weekly backup to fall back to. And of course, this works on all different levels. You can do it at boot and at hourly if you want to. I haven't got it set to that, but you can set it up like that if you want, if you're definitely tinkering around a lot inside of your system. Now, when you go to the users and it's excluded these, I don't recommend including these, primarily because when you're playing around on your system and you might have been doing work on your system, if you restore what that means is that all of your work that's in your home directory will also be restored to a state that was one day ago or one week ago, whichever backup you choose. You should have a different system set up for your home directory. I have a planned video for that, some ideas that people can use on Linux to have stuff backed up and have a good secure system for your documents. You shouldn't have just one copy in a local machine anyway, but obviously it's still new to a lot of people but you don't want to include it in this. Um, the only downside with time shift is that there is no way to configure a manual way to send these uh, restore points through time shift to a network based drive. So you have to copy these over manually. Uh, there is some really good um, scripts and little things you can do to automate this process, but that's a topic for another video. Uh, this video is aimed at new users. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do like it, please do press the like button. It definitely helps the algorithm and helps it spread more to other people who want to learn Linux. If you do like content from me, please do subscribe. If you don't like the content later, you can always unsubscribe, which would be sad, but I do want to make videos that are helpful for people. Remember, I'm on Twitch under the same name. I'm on uh, Twitter also. I tweet fairly often. So if you want to head over there, we can continue the conversation. Do leave a comment down below if you need some help with time shift or anything else related to networks, servers, home labs, and Linux. Um, as always, on a Friday, I stream live Twitch 8 p.m. Central European time and also release weekly videos like this one that you're watching right now. As always, this has been Robert and I'll see you in the next video.